Welcome back to Match Monday. I'm your host, Steve Kaufman, and joining me at this time, she is an all-around comedian, the artistic director of the Pack Theater. Oh. She's Alyssa Phillips. Hi. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me. This is, um, your kind of gimmick within the wrestling sphere, the wrestling universe, is that you love pro wrestling. Love it. Love it. Didn't grow up watching it. Not at all. Know nothing about it. Nothing. I love that. That's such a fresh take. I'm so glad you're okay with that. Because <laughs> I love that. Literally, I was like, are you sure you want me on your show? Because I don't know anything. No, I absolutely but. want such a fresh take because the the key is that you love pro wrestling. I think it's, I love Everything it. Everything else can, like, because you love pro wrestling now, 10 years from now, you'll be one of those people in the comments, like, looking down on someone who doesn't know shit about it because they happen to have not seen it. Right. So that's, I'm fine with that. It's only been, like, like two years yeah. that I've been, like, and, like, by watching it, I mean, like, going to, like, indie shows. Of course, like, also, like, going to indie shows and, like, do, like there's there are plenty of people who watch WWE or even New Japan or AEW that don't aren't involved in the SoCal indie scene. Right. That you that you could look down on their knowledge, like oh, I you would, don't. <laughs> I would never. You don't you don't know who Peter Avalon and Leva Bates were before Obviously. any of this. Come yeah. on. Um, is SoCal indie wrestling like a big like a SoCal big indie, indie wrestling? wrestling SoCal the SoCal indie wrestling scene is pretty big, especially if you look, because we're recording this at the end of 2019. If you look in the last 10 years, so since 2009, yeah, so many people you see on mainstream television now came through the SoCal indie indie wrestling scene sure. one way or another. That they were like kind of the second boon, because I would argue boom, boon, I said boon. I don't know where that came from. It's okay, I'm okay with you. But um, before 2009, I would argue it was the East Coast wrestling scene. Oh, really? The East Coast indie wrestling scene instead, that it kind of alternates. So if we're looking to 2020, okay. maybe, I think 2020, maybe the East Coast wrestling scene, or who knows, WWE might have just, it might just be all WWE now. What about like, is there like an indie wrestling scene in the Midwest, like in Kentucky? Is there like indie wrestling? Um, there is, but not dedicated to those play like okay. there aren't federations based in the middle of America okay. and then someone's gonna someone's gonna comment with a bunch of ones that I'm wrong I know reality wrestling uh, Booker T's promotion that's out of Houston okay which would comparatively be the middle but you're here your specialty is comedy so yes, I picked that, a, I'd be more comedy than yeah, wrestling I picked a comedy match some what does that mean some are you're gonna see oh, some are arguing saying. this is one of the best comedy matches ever done it was recommended by friend of the show Jeff Hawkins when he was on here. Oh, I know Jeff. Uh, you know, of course the, I know. <laughs> he, we watched a Toru Yano match. It was Toru Yano versus um, John Moxley, sounds formerly like Dean food. Ambrose. I know. It sounds like food. And yes, it, for those of you keeping track, this is the third Toru Yano match in the history of Match Monday. Because I love his work so much. That's a good thing. And we're going to dive right on in. Uh, okay. I will, and we while, while we push play, I can kind of bring it up here. Toru Yano is absolute camp. What is that? What do you mean camp? Like he's oh, like the way he wrote, like campy style. Campy like, style stuff. Oh, I like, recognize he's him. He's Kenny Omega. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, I didn't intro the whole match. It is Kenny Omega <laughs> versus Toru Yano. And this is the start of the, not the start, it's about the middle of the G1 in 2017. 2017, okay. The 2017 G1. Now, uh, the G1 is essentially all summer. It's about two months worth of matches where you pick two different blocks of some of the best people and they all have to have matches with each other. Okay. And the most wins from each block face each other. So it's like a bracket almost. It's kind of like, it's like a round robin tournament. Okay, the, okay. the best win loss record of both. No, don't. What did he give him? A Bible? A DVD. He oh. sells DVDs. Toriano sells DVDs. Why does he sell he's, DVDs? He's like, I give you. It's gift. <laughs> I give you gift. What's the DVD? Uh, he uh, is. I, I want to say it. he's a, he's a producer of. He's a producer of DVDs in Japan. Okay. Not porn. I know that sounds like porn. I was I wasn't gonna say it, might but already, I was thinking it. Might already be might also be porn. He's gonna up. Oh! 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 Get him! You Do it! snake! Oh, oh I love it! <laughs> Wait, so I would have thought he would have been the heel, Kenny Omega. Um Kenny Omega But no, no New Japan. Was... In New Japan Pro Wrestling, Kenny Omega was not necessarily a heel. The majority of the time. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, and that's his finisher, the one in one in angel, and he's about to do it to the referee. <laughs> ah! oh! So I've read about this match. I've not actually had a time had time to watch it. So you're seeing really? me, you're seeing me get it for the first I know Toriano's career and like I kinda know You know what happened. This is the G127. In G128, they also they they met again. Okay. And um Toriano, Which like, must have been a huge deal because yes. it's like the history of it, I get it. A lot of wrestling purists hate him, especially hate him in the G1. Take the bag yes. off the... 
He takes the um, the turnbuckle protectors, if you will. Turnbuckle. Why would you take it off? To hurt him. To hurt him, and then he also likes to hit people with it and like threaten to hit people with it. How and, is like, that legal? Like, I don't understand. I, legal is what the referee says is legal. Okay. It's, it's the easiest way to go about it. So God, I just, I love how he's still selling the powder to the face. He's so good. Two different, like, two different near falls. Oh my God. By the way, Dave Meltzer gave this match one star. Who's Dave? I know that Dave name. Meltzer's, when you hear about a match having a star rating, it's uh -huh. usually from Dave Meltzer. Dave Meltzer is, imagine a world where there was only ever the New York Times. Got it. And it was run by one dude. That dude is Dave Meltzer, and the, that world is wrestling. Gotcha. That it's, there's nothing inherently wrong with Dave, with Dave Meltzer being the point of reference for wrestling for so long. But he's the only point of reference. I don't know, that's, I don't, that's like a dictatorship. Of uh, oh. I'm already enjoying this match so much. Uh, and wait, so a one star is bad? Yes, it's out of five stars. Why would he give it a one star? He doesn't like comedy wrestling, and like uh, that's that's the problem with the subjective nature of Dave Meltzer giving everything a star rating. Is it's very much five out of five stars based on what he what Dave Meltzer thinks wrestling is. As wrestling. Yeah. Which, funny enough, 2018, 20, yeah, 2018, it was Kenny Omega versus Okada out of Wrestle Kingdom. He gave 6.75 stars out of five. The da Dave Meltzer star system that he invented, he decided later on, <laughs> you, you can just give something six stars, seven stars, so a kabillion it's not, stars. It's not like either of these wrestlers are comedy wrestlers. It's that this match happens to be a, a comedy This match. match is a comedy match, and Toru Yano specifically, Especially by this point in his career, but for the majority of the time, we all know him as a comedy wrestler. What? Okay, so, that's interesting to me. I, it's, the, I don't that, think I've ever heard I of him. Well, because I, I always, I try to pitch people that wrestling is more like film in the sense that there's different genres. Okay. That yeah, comedy yeah. is a genre of wrestling. Okay. Um, there's a match I prepared for this tape that we might not get to, which is the Invisible Man versus the Invisible Stand, and it's just two invisible wrestlers fighting each other. That's crazy. It's so crazy. There's no content ID on it, so I probably shouldn't play I mean, it. But we might get to it today. So it's just like two, it's like nothing. It's the, refer it's the referee and the crowd selling. That's funny. But I could see how like a purist would get. A purist would be like, oh my God, like this isn't wrestling. wrestling. And like, but you can point to anything like that at any point in wrestling. You could go to the 1980s and find something Ooh. that was getting over on a WrestleMania and be like, oh, that's dumb. Right, right, that's right. stupid. Why, why are you shaving Adrian Adonis's head? Why is that over? And it's yeah. like, why is anything over? It's implicit value. I kind of like that, like, it's like no holds bar, like yeah. anything goes. Like. And like, that's kind of how I feel about this show too, that it's, it's an interview show and like we may, we'll probably get to the packed theater when there's a lull in this match, but like, it's very much just loose and is what it is kind of a thing. I love it. And yes. Uh, uh, that's her. Cause, well, and I love, speaking of implicit value, I myself have not gone into a turnbuckle while the t while the padding was off. Yeah. So I have no frame of reference for whether or not that hurts any more than a normal it's turnbuckle. It's gonna all hurt. Probably, but at the same but at the same time, they by them selling it and me never being in the ring, the implicit value is oh that hurts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which I understand there are people who say if you're trying to watch this match on the same card as an as a match where people do real serious stuff, the argument becomes. Oh, well, you're... Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Nothing. Plastic is okay. That still hurts, dude. You put four oh, no, in plastic hurts. and that, that hurts. absolutely hurts. Like... See, but that's still real wrestling, just because yeah. it's not like... You're working the... Like, people yeah. are into it. You're working the crowd. Like, yeah. especially the G1 that I like. Um, ah, the tape! He's got the tape! What is he doing? Is he taping his he, he ta ankles together? Yes. He gets athletic tape and he tapes someone's ankles together. That's another one of his gimmicks. Should not be allowed, though. <laughs> but is it illegal? Where, where in New Japan's rules does it say? But you're you giving someone a physical handicap. I then the ref, it's the re referee needs to stop it. Then referee doesn't speak English. <laughs> neither does Kenny. Well, actually, Kenny. <laughs> neither does Toriano. Valid. <laughs> well, also hair pulling. That should be. <laughs> no. Oh my God. <laughs> He's got to wrestle. Oh, come on! I'll oh, grab the tape. Kenny Omega, grab the tape. I want to see two people, yeah, yeah, two yeah. feet between them. That'd be great. Yes! 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 That's the way to heighten it. That's amazing. Yes. I'm so happy for this. 
You didn't know that was gonna happen? Um, I had a feeling. Like, I'm sure the, I'm sure in 2017, the gif of them fighting each other while tied together yeah, yeah, floated yeah. around that I, it was inescapable. It's like a three-legged race of wrestling. A little bit. I'm... Oh so, my God. I'm gonna book it right now. In my future taping schedule, you and I are gonna have to watch the Kenny Omega Toriano from the G128. Oh, I wanna watch it. Whenever you come it. back, that's, yeah, that's yeah, on yeah. the agenda. I'm booking it here I'm and done. now. I'm in. Cause oh my that, God. Because booking the actual matches in Y is the hardest part of this show. So if I can find, <laughs> I can find reason for good guests to come back. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> but like that, also, these are working shots though. Also, like just like funny that like they don't like take the time to like lean down and like unra like, take no. the tape off. No, but like it's also that's, that was enough rapping that you're like, no, that's no, true. that that was, my opponent could still possibly come after me. That's so I can't, po I don't have the time to actually tear up the tape. Oh my God, that's true. That like, the, that logic or that. um. You have no balance, yeah. It, all of that makes sense to me. But look at the, like. It's just, like a three-legged race, it is. They're it's working like... a match with two legs between them, essentially. And I'm loving it. That's great. I, oh my God. Also, if I remember correctly, the G127, Kenny Omega did not win that G1. The whole thing? Yeah. Ooh. Because essentially there's two blocks. I think it's two blocks of 16 wrestlers. Okay. So 32 wrestlers, and then they, they wrestle each other in a round robin tournament for the course of like literally every night of an entire summer, like a July and an August. Oh my God. And then at the end, the winner of the A block and the winner of the B block fight each other. And that winner gets a briefcase. Of money? Um, no. This is, like, what I are know, we fighting for? No, but the, you can cash in the briefcase to fight the world champion. Oh, I've seen people Like Money this. in the Bank, but it's not, it's not like Money in the Bank in the WWE where you can cash it in any time. Like, you still have a lot, there's a lot more honor in New Japan. Did Dolph Ziggler do this? Dolph Ziggler did do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay, that was I in, that this. was in WWE, it was a different thing. If you win the G1, you get to carry a briefcase, it's but gonna it's... gonna make up names. I know. <laughs> But you get to cash in the briefcase, but you have to like, it's a predetermined time. You don't get to just. Oh, love that. You don't get to just do it. Right. Um, what's funny is in in the, like the probably 10 years they've been doing that system, the briefcase system, th there he goes. See, yeah, take gave, the tape off. But he gave himself the time. Yeah, he hurt the guy. To take the tape off. I'm and now, you. ah, he scissors. got scissors. Okay, scissors in a wrestling ring <laughs> don't really. Oh Sounds no, smart. You get, he's gonna, I, I guarantee you, he's a safe enough worker that once he gets them off, he's gonna throw them back to that guy. Like, hey, get him out of my ring, please. No, or he's No, gonna, he's got Why are you scissors. working? Kenny Omega working Oh my god. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Oh, oh. no. Because <laughs> now Toriano's got the scissors. And, and the kick. He got kicked as well. But see, see that? I think that was, back then they were still called young boys, they're called young lions now. What? He grew a, a young lion gra went in and grabbed the scissors really oh, fast. Oh, I didn't even see it. Because that would be unsafe to just have scissors That's laying around the mat. It was either a young lion or that gentleman. Oh, man. These and matches still... are so long. Yes. This isn't a very long match. No, I mean, but like, I in a good New way. New Japan Pro Wrestling matches are very long. I did a comedy wrestling match that was, like, three minutes, and at the end I was like, and I, like, I... Oh, you were winded, yeah. I was winded. And I'm in shape. Oh, like, the wind the wind you need for pro wrestling is insane. Insane to me. Oh my god. And then uh you, you hear yeah, an eight count. It's important to note you have till twenty. You have till twenty in New Japan. You don't have till ten. You you have to they have to count to twenty? No, in no. um for a count out. What does that mean? Because Toriano's outside the ring. So the referee oh, I starts see, counting. I see, I see, I see. You can get a count out victory. Toriano's famous for count out victories where he'll tape someone to the guardrail and then just run into the ring at 19. Oh my God. And he's also considered the G1 spoiler because there are a lot of people, including uh, John Moxley, who was undefeated heading into their match with Toriano. Okay. And then Toriano will get like a count out banana peel victory. Okay. And like spoil someone like John Moxley's chances of doing the G, like winning the G1. I know that name and I know I should know who he's that on, is. He's on, he was formerly Dean Ambrose. He's on AEW. He's, I'm, Oh, yes. I know who that you is. Know, okay, 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 okay. Was that 20? Yes! Oh, yes! The, I love Toriyama matches so he much. He did that! I recognize yes, that. Yes, he does the thing. And then the, that thing. Kenny Omega, I want to say... How old is he? What do we think? Kenny Omega is like 35. No way! Oh. In, in 2017, Kenny Omega was a, like... You're trying to tell me that like right now, 2017 Kenny Omega is like under 30? 
No, I think he's like old. <laughs> now he's get up. Oh my god. Do you want the scissors? Aww. No. Do you want the scissors? Don't be a dick. <laughs> um, I think he's older. You think he's very old? Like, how Not old do you think Kenny Omega? I don't think Kenny Omega is that old. And I think I'm he's, really bad this game. he's old enough to have gotten a look by the WWE in like 08, I think, and then go to Japan because he didn't like what, what the saying. business was. But he was in Japan for a decent amount of time, but that, that still only makes him under 40. Yeah, I guess. I was going to say 37. Also, he's the executive vice president of the number two wrestling company in the world. So what do we need? That you could be forty-five and be that. Yeah. Like that's. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the, the DVD. So it's the DVD. Oh my god. I but, bet it's porn. <laughs> it's usually porn. Oh yes. Oh. I love that he's gonna hobble back. I love that no one has taken the tape off his ankles. What's wrong with you well, people? No, he's selling the tape. I get it, but like. In a match, you usually sell the stuff, and here you're just gonna sell. Oh my god. You sell the. Oh god. He's doing it. He's like. <laughs> poor guy. Oh, I'm so happy this wasn't clipped out. This is this is so good. Then he's like, then he hobbling his <laughs> way backstage. <laughs> he is. Oh my god. Oh no, he's gonna. He's roll. gonna roll. He's gonna roll. He's gotta he's gotta heighten like, that. You gotta just keep heightening. Yes, that's how you heighten is by you keep gotta, rolling. If you felt it, and now you're back up. And now. Oh my god. I have a feeling he had a moment once he got up where it's like... <sighs> okay, give me the scissors. Well, yeah, but he looked and he was like, the back is still so far. <laughs> still so <laughs> far in the locker to room. Him? Why? My commitment to this bit has <laughs> been so long. Oh my god, I hope he got paid well for that. I He, he does very well. well I think good. most of the New Japan guys do very well. Really? Um, so, seeing this match for the very first time. Yeah, how do you Seeing feel? a comedy match for the very first time. I love this. I love everything about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think they... Also, Toriano matches versus some other... Uh, there are some comedy matches that are harder to, like, grasp. Okay. I think the, this match makes sense. That Kenny Omega facing someone else or another match happening later in the night. This match still existed in its own universe where yeah. everything just made sense. Where it's like, I don't know, Kenny Omega could have taped people's ankles together in a more serious match. He right. just doesn't. Right. He just doesn't because he has to play to his opponent. Toriano, that's how... Toriano, that's Those are the tools at Toriano's disposal. I don't know. Right. I like... I like it a lot. Of, it's it's kind of it's kind of controversial. There are a lot of people in the wrestling world that hate these kind of matches. I can see that because it's like not gimmicky, but like, but okay, like, like it's carny. It's very carny. Yeah. Like it's very old. Like so old school. Everyone talks about the old school. This is really old school. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like carny to the point of corny. I get that. There, yeah. Um, I don't know what the wrestling show was that I watched, but it was the same day that AEW premiered because we watched like a bunch of shows back to back. But it was in Japan. I want to yes. say it was like New Japan. No, see, I don't no, know. No, you watched it. No, um, if it, there was the day AEW like premiered. There was uh, like a bunch of wrestling. Then on there it. was NXT UK, and then there was there was an NXT UK takeover, and then there was also a New Japan show. Okay, so that New Japan, you Japan, show, that New Japan show. I watched it and I loved it, but the reason why I loved it was because for me it was more like about like the athleticism. Yes. It would, there was like grappling and like things to me that like, I don't know anything about wrestling. Yes. But like what would be like old school, like it just seemed like more about that and less about gimmick and less about like character storyline. And that was really cool to watch yes. as well. I don't think one's better or worse. No, I, I think, think they're different. all different brands. Like yeah, in a yeah. literal brand, I would argue that day you're talking about specifically, it was an NXT UK takeover show, which I thought was completely different from the NXT. Yes. There was in a New Japan show in, the UK yeah, yeah, as yeah. well and then it was completely different from that show and then there was the AEW Fold no it was AEW All Out and that was completely different from the other two like I think everyone had a distinct brand I think wrestling the wrestling business is super healthy here at the end of 2019 that's great it, it's great and that's a great place to leave it if the people want to find you on all the social medias where can they? all the socials all of um, them uh, Alyssa MP E-L-Y-S-S-A-M-P is like me on Instagram and I don't know I think Twitter too And you think are you not a Twitter person I am a not? Twitter person but I don't know what my handle is that's oh, that wow. okay. if you look at the Pack Theater you'll find me yes you were also the artistic director of the Pack Theater I am a very uh, good focal point for a lot of great artists here in Los Angeles yeah I think so and I think there will be another video where we talk a lot about the Pack Theater oh man but it just happened to not be this one I'm your host Steve Kaufman <laughs> you can find me on Twitter almost exclusively at Steve Kaufman that is K-A-U-F M-A-N-N, -N. this has been Match Monday. It is powered by AfterBuzz TV. You're watching us on the AfterBuzz TV Wrestling and Sports channel. Go ahead and give us a subscribe. Give them some likes. Give them some love. And I will. And you can also go to MatchMonday.com. You can find the playlist of everything we've done and everything we will do. And I will see you next week.